president of the uh, North End Civic Association, and uh, when she stopped doing that, she was uh, welcome to sign up those meetings for many, many years.
an affidavit of the service indicating that all neighbors within a two hundred foot radius of the dwelling had been served with notice. And then I would ask the board to determine that the application by Robert and Claudia Wilson, owners of 20 Nassau Street, to allow an extension of a one rear, one story rear addition of a non conforming two family house in an R1 district is a type two action and does not have a significant effect on the environment as defined by SECRA. So moved. Second. Any discussion? This motion to Trustee Lombardo, Aye. Trustee Chair, Aye. Trustee Stewart, Aye. Trustee Longbody, and Mayor Fitzgerald. Aye. Thank you. I see that Mr. McGarry is here to, I guess, represent the applicant, and if they uh, be sworn in by the Senate. Do you swear from the testimony that you will be the true manager of the Senate? Yes. Name and address, please. Mario Burgara, being Victor, E R G A R A, 200 Gerald Turnpike, Old Park. Good evening, members of the board. First, a little housekeeping. If you would have referred to drawing A1, you will note that the room adjacent to the bathroom is listed or labeled as the living room. That is correct. That is the kitchen. You will also note that it appears that the dining room has a partition separating from the rest of the house. That is also incorrect. It is open. The Wilsons have owned their home since 1985, and at that time the second kitchen was located in what is now a bedroom that is directly adjacent to the bathroom on the second floor. At one point, the uh, Wilson son and his wife lived on the second floor. After they left, the kitchen was removed. And it's, since it is their intention to rent the second floor, the Wilsons are now proposing to reinstall the kitchen and expand the living space by adding a one-story structure to be used as a bedroom. The proposed bedroom is excuse me, the proposed bedroom will be located on the northeast side of the premises and measures approximately 12 by 15 feet and is compliant with zoning. Thank you uh, for coming in. I just uh, have one question. I just want to put on record that the uh, the uh, owner could confirm that they understand that it will still be taxed as a um, two two family home. Yes, you got it. It's the one about the same thing. Rob Wilson, twenty minutes. Thank you. 
it's occupied as having a space. There's no limitation to the room. Mr. Uh, Wilson uses it as a music room, as his instruments are there. So it's just a little space. I, I, I think I just was more concerned. I didn't know what the term, I mean, I know what occupied means, but in terms of your industry. So it's a little bit space. Okay. Yeah. I don't know any more questions. And if I could ask the board for a motion to reserve the decision and close the public. So moved. Second. This will be on the board. Trustee Von Bonner. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Sewitt. Aye. Trustee Longboy. Aye. And Mayor Fitzgerald.
The month of September included 125 calls for service, 99 ambulance calls, and 12 mutual aids to emergencies, mostly fires, and other communities. In addition to the department's many hours of direct service to the public, our floor park department spends a great deal of time on important and ongoing training. For the leadership and or the members, this training is offered. In recent months, this has included strategies and tactics for large-scale incidents, which is sadly growing more important, shaping today's fire departments for today's expectations, introduction to fire officer, a 16-week series of training in which uh, firefighters um, are participating in, carbon monoxide and air monitoring, fire behavior and arson awareness, and an upcoming December department drill conducted in, in conjunction in partnership with National Grid on responding to gas emergencies, obviously on the top of the great importance. Our chief staff members are also investigating the latest equipment and methods used to extinguish electric vehicle fires, including special blankets and hose positioning, which can attack the fire from underneath the vehicle. Our fire department will continue to work with other departments and agencies, including the Nassau County Fire Marshal's Office, to stay ahead of the rapidly changing best practices in fighting EV or electric vehicle fires. For the Department of Public Works, the paving of Spooner Street has been completed and has the Spooner parking lot. There are several items in the parking lot now on the punch list for several adjustments. Beautiful new trees selected by homeowners from lists of trees um, with power lines on the same side of the street and those with power lines on the other side are currently being planted to add the green we all love on those trees. New trees are also available and will be planted in early December. If you've got a new tree, please call the DPW at 516-326-3266.
2022 construction updates. The hockey multi-purpose green construction project is underway. Expect to see concrete trucks next week to start the new green construction. Structure. The completion of this project, project will be early in, early in spring. The, li the library, the library entrance ramp construction project will start next week. The front entrance door will be closed during the construction period. All entry and exiting must, be, must take place at the back entrance door. The completion of this project is also expected early next spring. For our police department. As we wind up with daylight saving time upon us, it's getting early, it's getting darker much earlier. So please drive safely and keep an eye out for our children and other residents moving through our community. At many of our civics meetings, we often hear about speeding, failure to stop at stop signs, and running various traffic violations. Quite often, when enforcement occurs, residents are some of the offenders. So once again, to avoid any unfortunate incidents, please obey traffic regulations and drive safely throughout our community. Thank you, Trustee Chair. Trustee Stewart. Hi, good evening. Thank you all for coming. I would like to start this evening by offering my condolences to the Frankie family. Jean Frankie was on the board of the Northern Civic Association when I joined in 1998. I was honored to serve on that board with her for many years. There's people like Jean Frankie that are the heart and soul of many volunteer organizations here in the village of Royal Park. I would like to welcome our newest police officers uh, to, their new, to their new positions. It's an honor to swear them in. I wish them long safe, successful careers here in the village. For the Recreation Center, many residents are enjoying their new clinical courts on volleyball courts A and C. It's wonderful to see so many people out there enjoying themselves. People are playing clinical court on volleyball courts because, as Trustee Chair mentioned, the ring construction is in full swing. Um, our fields remain open. Please be aware of your surroundings and do not go beyond the construct construction fencing. Uh, beginning yesterday, the 14th, the lights at the recreation center are off. Fields remain open until Sunday, December 4th. Uh, due to this construction, there will be no recreation center tree lighting this year. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you at the village tree lighting on the 2nd and the chamber tree lighting in uh, October day on the 10th. For the Long Island Railroad and 3TC, this past weekend, the Hudson Line was inoperable due to a planned outage, so the railroad can install a switch. That will allow trains to move on and off the Hempstead Branch to and from the main line. Last week, much maintenance work could be seen underneath the station as well as under the tracks as the railroad cleaned under the state under the tracks and reinforced their pigeon netting under the trestles. Uh, at the Tunnel Street Tunnel, the MTA maintains that they must have vehicular access at the site. Uh, the third track project is what is called a design build, meaning that as things come up, they design for them, walk up leaving communities along their corridor, struggling to mitigate concerns for both residents and the village. <clears throat> village, resident, village officials are meeting with representatives from the railroad later this week to discuss the upcoming repair work at the Floral Park Station. We are hoping to hear some very positive news about the fixes coming to our station at this early morning meeting. As always, residents are encouraged to reach out directly to the MTA with questions and concerns, as we have found this the most effective way for residents to communicate with, with the MTA. They can be reached at www.contact.mta.info slash customer dash feedback or by phone at 516-203-4955. If anyone wants to email me at jstewart at fpvillage.org, I'd be happy to send that information over to you. It's a lot verbally. Uh, there is an automated response to this morning, but you can ask for more options and then ask for comments and concerns, and you will eventually get to a person. I also encourage you to attend civic association meetings where you can hear local and village news firsthand. <coughs> Thank you, Trustees. The trustee on the body. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> For the Floor Park Library, uh, the construction, uh, as you heard before, the construction upgrades have started on the new ADA ramp, the front entrance, and shortly on the new roof. Please pay attention to the signs and directions as the upgrade work continues. Uh, visitors will need to enter through the rear entrance located in the parking lot during this time. When the ramp is completed, the bike racks and bushes will be returned to finish off the front. November is food for fines month. The library will wait fines up to $5 in exchange for non-perishable foods to be donated to the food pantry. It's a great way to clear your account and help another great service in our village. Some upcoming events and classes include Empire Council Defensive Driver, December 8th, the Eng English Language Learning Class, November 26th, Boy Scout Troop 482 Wheat Fundraiser on Saturday, November 26th on the library board. Tuesday, November 29th at 7 p.m., a representative from SCORE, counselors to small businesses, will offer ideas and information for small businesses on how to utilize social media to grow your small business. Wednesday, November 30th, the Hempstead Town Club.
Card Global Passport Van will be at the library from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is a great convenient way to apply for or renew your passport. It is by appointment only, so please call 516-812-3100 to set up a time. And the library is closed Thursday, November 24th for Thanksgiving. Details on these and many other events are listed on the library website, www.4parklibrary.org. For Four Village Studios, we have some wonderful breaking news from our studio. At the 2022 Alliance for Community Media Northeast Regional Video Festival, Four Village Studio won four awards. Congratulations to all the award recipients, and our winners are first place in the historical documentary category, The Antique Road Test Number 23, producers Walter Gosling and John Salimo. First place in the general talk show, Uncorked Number 25, Wine and Ave Maria, producer Lex Wicker. Second place in municipal and government programming category, our Fall Park Fire Department Red Alert Number 6, Emergency Medical Technology, producers Larry King, AEMT, and Bob Wisniewski, Firefighter. In third place in the community impact category, Fall Park, Fire, uh, Fall Park Police Department, Behind the Badge Number 1, Surviving an Active Shooter, producer Lieutenant Will, Dar Will Darby. The Alliance for Community Media covers community TV studios throughout the Northeast New England region. Congratulations to all our winners and thank you to all our producers and our operations manager, Jim Green, for making four of those studios the great studio that it is. To watch this year's award winners and see a list of all our shows, please visit www.4bs.org or watch your local provider the station. I would like to wish all our neighbors and friends a very happy, healthy, safe Thanksgiving. It's a great time to be with family and friends and give thanks for all our blessings. And speaking of safety, for those of you that like to deep fry your turkeys next week, please be careful and make sure they're defrosted and dry. The deep fryer is safe outdoors on a level surface and the oil is at the proper level and not overfilled. Mishaps can lead to fires and serious burns. These are just delicious and a great way to make the turkey, but can be very dangerous if you don't follow the directions and prepare it properly. And with that, to all that, keep going, enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Trustee Lombardi. Uh, a couple things uh, from my report. With regards to the uh, fire department, the Chief's Office recently approached the village board to explore with them the possibility of having a contracted ambulance service to the village. We are at the beginning of an investigative stage. There have been no decisions made, and there are a number of questions along with the requisite significant due diligence that needs to be performed by various parties, including the Bill of Court. We will endeavor to keep all up to date with regards to the need for and the details of how this may work if it is determined to move forward. Uh, separately, last night, Trustee Chiara and myself had the uh, pleasure of attending our uh, school board meeting uh, with, we were the last in a series of uh, civic presentations that the school board asked for. Uh, first was the fire department in September. First was police. Oh, first was police in September. Then our fire department went, and then uh, last night uh, we wrapped up. We had a very attentive audience, uh, gave them an explanation of the overview of the village, along with uh, what's going on, and we had a number of uh, good questions attentive audience, both uh, young and old. And with regards to young people, we do go to those board meetings once in a while, and it is amazing to see the work uh, that the young people in the village are doing on a day in and day out. Uh, the school board does a very good job of uh, presenting them every meeting. And I'd like to thank the school board for affording us the opportunity to uh, further reach our residents on uh, what we do here in the village and uh, what a great place it is and how it's made to be uh, Trustee Stewart mentioned civic associations. There are two of them. I mean, two from Thursday night, right? At the full building. And I'd also like to thank Philip Kakachi from Just the Facts Media. I think I saw Brian Duffy on, he is on uh, Zoom <coughs> from Blank Slate Media for covering us, as always. And lastly, uh, from uh, myself, my family, the entire village board and their families, and the entire village. Uh, have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving and enjoy. And I'd like to ask for a motion to close this portion of the meeting. So moved. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Happy Thanksgiving, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So now I'd like to open it up for questions and comments from residents that are here in the hotel. Sure. Sure. 
How are you feeling? Hi, I'm Donna from Piano, and I live at 54 North Tyson Avenue. You used to be named. Yes. Can you spell last name, please? Sure. C A L T A B I A N O. At the piano. I have a problem. My house is situated in Queens and Nassau. So it, it's causing a big issue as far as parking and enforcement in front of my house. When I moved in in 2013, there were meters down the block. And there was also a line down the middle of the street diagonally showing where Nassau started and where Queens started. And it was Kind of easy for people to see. Was it a paved line or was it a long line? It was a paved line. It was a total different color pavement from both counties. Okay. And it was a cute story to tell people, oh, you're outside and we'll go to And I believe it was Mike's landlord who maybe told me there's two fire hydrants. I showed the last picture. There's two fire hydrants, one on the Queen side and one on the Nassau side. And being a newbie on the block, I wasn't sure where I could park or but, so he explained, well, you just follow the five items. One side is Nassau, one side is Queens. He makes it very easy. When the, when the parking meters were down the end of the block, there's an office building at the corner, and there's also the Verizon building. The people would park in front of my house and squeeze so they would be on one side of my door, thinking they were in Queens. But they're all in Nassau. You see the map I gave you. The whole front of my house and even a piece of my neighbor's house are Nassau. Now we compounded it even worse this year. Well, last year, 18 months ago, the city of New York, in their infinite wisdom, decided to pave the street. And I guess they thought they were doing us a favor because they then brought the pavement past my house. And you'll see in one of those pictures a line exactly where the pavement is now. Everybody on my side of the street have Queen's addresses. So people drive down the block and they see all these Queen's addresses and there I am, the last house next to the Verizon building, and they go, oh, this is Queen's, and they park there. Reinforced by the fact that there's a sign right there that says four hour parking and the pavement now. I have called numerous times for enforcement. Two weeks ago, I, yelled, oh, I saw a police car make a circle and then another one. I went out and he was talking to my neighbor across the street. And I said, well, why didn't you want these tummies? And he said, oh no, we only do the village of Floral Park. You're not in the village of Floral Park. I said, but I am. See, my address is 54 North Tyson. He said, well, we were told not to do um, that side of the sign, we had to do on the other side of the sign. Which is, my daughter said this to me, and I said, no, that can't be. But because of the pavement where it is and the sign where it is, the enforcement thinks that my house is Queens. Mm -hmm. So I constantly have people in front of my house, day and night. There's a picture there of a red van, and if you look very carefully, it has foggy windows. And that picture was taken at 7.38. He was there for three days. He gets very, they get, get very close to my driveway, and it's a hazard pulling out because I have a hard time. I have to sneak out slowly. If you, if you know North Tyson or even South Tyson, they think it's a speedway. So I, if they get that close to my driveway, it's a big van. I have a hard time getting out of my car. What I really would like, when the last time I spoke to somebody, the dispatcher, she said to me that I should speak to the. Um, Department of Public Works and have them put the sign right where NASA starts, which would be on a grassy part of my neighbor's property. I don't think I can just call the Department of Public Works and say, could you put a sign there? So I'm hoping you guys and women could help me train the police force, because this police officer was arguing with me that I was not a NASA. I can show you my tax bills that show that I'm in Nassau. I pay taxes in Nassau and Queens. I can speak to that. Okay. Uh, the super, our general supervisor, Kevin Pearsall, came to me. The police informed him of the DPW. And I pulled out all the surveys. We did identify the line. You're, you're correct. Uh, and 
they are going to move that sign. So it's on exactly the Nassau side. So we're taking care of it. All right, that is great. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I feel like uh, I don't like, want to be a pain. I call up all the time, and I can tell that they're saying, it's hard again. Don't tell me. And yes. I don't want to be a pain. I don't like to be so, a pain. I'll give this to the lieutenant and the uh, kind of people. Yeah, we'll just make sure that that's everybody right. understands the issue. I, yeah, I think we're aware, we're aware, but I think what the problem is is that we can't write the ticket if the sign is in the wrong place. Because then what ends up happening is the person that's going to park there, they just say, oh, the sign is up this way. You know, I park on this side of the sign. And even if, even if they're correct that the line is the correct, correct place, they come up to court that it's just going to be dismissed because they'll just say, that the sign wasn't in the right place. So it's uh, So we'll get the sign removed and once it's moved the police will be in the, in the enforce it and we'll make sure this gets to all the officers yeah. that are involved. Thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. Don't have to take the call again. That's what we I know, I understand. Thank you again for being helpful. Thank you for bringing the documents. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, very, 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 very I'm easy. a visual person. I need to see yeah, yeah. this. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Trustees, Officers, and Community. My name is Shannon Early Davis, Early Davis, C A R L Y D A V I S, and I'm a resident of South Florida Park 227, Rocat Avenue. I'm also the Crazy Crossing Guard in front of Swan High School. So, uh, maybe y'all come to me that's me. Um, I'm here to see you. You do a great job, by the way. Sir? I said you do a great job. I try. Um, I'm here this evening because I have written the town of Hempstead because I didn't know the boundaries of Tulip Avenue, east and west, from Gilmore to Landau. Um, because there's no school marking over there. And, um, I got a letter back from Town Pimps that, that they would look into it. I asked, um, I asked Legislator Solages and she looked into it for me and said it is a part of full park property. So I said, let me come tonight to find out if, in fact, it is so that I could ask about the market. So, yeah, so we got a response for the village administrator right there. Where we yes, we discussed at the last board meeting. Uh, we spoke with uh, uh, Assembly Woman Slides' office, Amanda from, the, from the, our office. Um, and we discussed last board meeting to have that uh, speed zone installed, just actually following up with the town of Tom Reed, who's the inspector on that um, documentation that he received. Yeah, he's not in front of a and a half, but uh, as to how do we proceed to get that done. So I think the intention is to get that speed zone put in as you requested and as. Something when Ms. Lyons' office has asked us to see if we could expedite. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to get that done. I've been over here four years, and it's like, it's, it's, when people talk about the speed, and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Can I ask you, can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Did you reach out to the town and said, for the safety of the students that you cross every day? Yes, ma'am. I wrote. That is so honorable. Thank I wrote so the town of Hempstead, office attorney, town of Hempstead, and the yeah, they all Thank you so much for looking out for our children. Yes, ma'am. I would also like to get into that if I could because I live in the neighborhood right behind Salonica. So I'm on Correa View and um, Tulip all the time. I'm also an educator. I've watched you in action. God bless you. You do amazing things at that corner given the, the layout of the corner, the many directions traffic is coming from the turn lanes, the arrows. And um, what is it, about 1,800 Salonica students, most of which cross there? Yes. Uh, I echo Trustee Stewart's comments. Thank you very, very much because you have one of the most challenging corners that I've ever seen. And I really appreciate your taking on that challenge and handling it so, in such an expert manner. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming Thank you, Anyone else here at Village Hall? Anyone on Zoom? I see Barnaby Jones is on. <laughs> 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 